Bless the Lord who forgives our sins. His mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our sins by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the inequity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your town. For in six days the Lord, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long, in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
please recite with me Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all the lands and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep, he has set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. But them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not be dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Second reading is from 1 Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? Or since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found the people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. 
stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews said to them, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days. He was speaking of the temple of his body. And after he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Day by day, dear Lord of these three things I pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. When I was young and living in Henrico County, about 10 miles east of Richmond, Virginia, we frequently visited a collection of flea market type stores and outdoor stands known as the Williamsburg Pottery. Now, the Windsor Pottery is famous now as a collection of local retail outlet shops that tourists visit, but it's been gentrified. In my younger days, it was nothing like it is now. While still a destination market, it was filled with old center block and wooden buildings and stands. Some of the buildings had no floor or they had cement floors and they meandered on filled with all manner of flea market type merchandise. It was a lot like a low-end outdoor version of Gordy Harper's Bazaar, only much bigger. The pottery back then was ugly. In fact, the newspapers referred to it as a real eyesore. It had tacky signs directing you to different stands or buildings. And despite the bargains, it was not fun in the rain. If you went to the pottery in the rain, you'd be covered with mud from head to toe. The funny thing is the pottery was always crowded and busy and bustling, even in the rain. And if you found a bargain, you grab it quickly to avoid somebody else getting it first. Now, if the Winsworth pottery had also included stands for selling animals, it might be a pretty good image of the market that took place in the courtyard of the Jerusalem temple. The temple market was a bustling outdoor bazaar. It was a destination market. Those coming to worship at the temple often came from miles around, especially at pilgrimage days, such as the Passover. The market would have been larger at these times because pilgrims would shop there to buy animals for sacrifice and perhaps food and other essentials. They would also changed their money to be able to pay the temple tax. I picture this market as dusty and crowded with people hawking their wares and animals bleeding and chirping. In fact, despite the many courtyards and doors between the market and the inner worship spaces of the temple, I'll bet all that racket really made prayer difficult. Something about the idea of going someplace to worship and having to pass through all this commercial activity seems incongruent to me. Of course, folks needed to find animals for sacrifice and obtain temple coins. But the market had gone so toward profit making that the original purpose was lost. It might also have been better if the activity stopped during holy moments. But it seems the temple's commercial activity actually increased the holier the season. Our lives, and especially our minds, can be like marketplaces sometimes. 
We run from the shop of kids to the shop of school to the shop of work to the shop of preparing meals. We want to achieve. We want to consume. We want to improve ourselves. We want to buy nice things, cars, homes, clothes, smart devices. While some of these things are wholesome, they can also become so much about ourselves that they lose their purpose. We also allow them to make so much noise in our minds that sometimes we can't hear God. We become so focused on the secular that we can't pray to the holy. For example, raising children is a beautiful God-given vocation. Children are a blessing. But what happens if our child or grandchild hopes to be the first violin in the orchestra, but his best friend is a better violinist and he's the first violin? Perhaps we let that desire to be the first violin consume our children and us so much that we actually hope bad things happen to the friend, or that we encourage our children to envy their friend's talent. A more prayer-focused way is to thank God for the talent God gave our child and his friend than to ask God how God wants our child to use that talent and worship to God. Let's say we need a new car. Having a new vehicle may be critical to us being able to go where we need to go, including work, school, and church. It may be necessary for our safety. But new cars also have the tendency to create noise in our lives. For example, the noise says that we need an attention-grabbing car when an ordinary one will do. Or the noise says that we should work harder or overextend ourselves to reward ourselves with that beautiful car when we feed our souls better by balancing work with prayer time in our lives. We need to find time every day to worship God rather than to be caught up in the market's noise and bustle. The noisy mark in our minds also sometimes encourages us to commit the sin of gluttony. Gluttony isn't really about overeating. Gluttony is about overconsuming. The sin is having to have 10 of something when one will do. It's about having to be stimulated all the time, filling our calendar with new and exciting activities. The sin is taking the original good intent to serve others and turning it into a hamster wheel of action that may become more and more about what we achieve than about helping others. We're created in the image of God and claimed as Christ own forever to be in a relationship with God. We're created to worship God, to spend time in prayer with God. To do that, sometimes we need to cleanse our minds and lives of practices that, while well-intentioned, actually detract from our worship of God. Sometimes we need to get rid of the busyness and noise of our lives. That is a perfect time to examine our lives for what distracts us from spending time with God. We ask God to cleanse off us of too much consumption or too much busyness. We ask God to make us grateful for our gifts, rather than always striving to be better than others. We ask God to get us out of the noisy marketplaces that distract us so that we can worship. We ask God to help us stop and pray. Amen. Please join with me in affirming our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophet. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people, form one. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God and for the unity of all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our presiding Bishop Michael, our Bishop Sean, our priest Randy, our deacon Martha, and our deanery prayer partner, St. John's Wilson, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the town of Newfane, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, especially Joe Bresca Sr., Connie Eckback, Lexan Harrelson, Laura Hubbard, Jim Jones, Margaret Moran, Ed Reeb, Jessica Sherry, Armand, Dean, Jamie, Nick, Pam, and any that you now name. And the people on our long-term prayer list, which we will read as the table is set, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are serving in the military, especially Garrett Adeligio, Vincent Adeligio, Matthew Chesky, James Clark, Joseph DePew, Hannah Federico, Ryan Hass, Ethan Knott, Ryan Lanahan, Peg Magritte, Jeremy Martin, Rudy Sanchez, Bryce Smith, and Mark Volt, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed, especially Harold Chummy Benson, Marion Harrington, Sandra Hill, Joseph Kresh, Josephine Marks, Charlene Nowicki, Paul Steen, and any you now name. Lord have mercy. mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion, protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. Andrew, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. Let us pray the litany for Hunger Sunday. Holy and loving God, we ask you to fill the hearts of all who are hungry today with your Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of persons who are troubled. 
Fill the minds of men and women who are confused. Fill the stomachs of your children who are hungry. Fill the souls of people who are feeling lost. Fill the lives of all who need you but do not know you. Fill the hearts of those who feel abandoned by you. Fill our souls that we may be inspired to share our abundance with others so that there will be no more empty, hungry stomachs and souls. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, who fills us with your endless grace. Amen. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health and making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when the schools close, remember those who have no option. May we who have to cancel our trips, remember those who have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market, remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for quarantine at home, remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. And during this time, when we may not be able to physically wrap our arms around each other, let us yet find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and in the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life, amen. The peace of the Lord will be always with you. Peace, everybody. Peace of the Lord. We love you. Peace. Peace, everybody. Peace. Peace. It's good to see everyone. Good to see everybody. All right. I believe you have some announcements. I have two announcements from Jamie. She is unable to join us today. The first one is for the hospice bouquet drive, St. Andrews raised $400. So thank you to all of St. Andrews and everyone who participated in that. That's good news. The second announcement is regarding fish fry. Our sales for Friday, drum roll please. <laughs> St. Andrews sold 400 dinners Friday. Oh my yes. A big shout out to the fish fry team, great job. Way to go guys, way to go. Um, congratulations. Oh, you are, you have a new grandson. Yes, so, tell, you're welcome. Tell us his name, Connor something, right? Tell us his name. His name is Connor James Bresca. He was eight pounds, 10 ounces, 20.25 inches long. <laughs> He, mom are in great health. Dad's ecstatic. So all is well. God's blessings. Oh, good. 
Okay. Any birthdays or anniversaries? I have one announcement. Okay. I'm sorry to interrupt. Okay, um, no I would like I would like anyone that can come into the store this week that still has a key to work on changeover activities. You can we're gonna actually be close to customers Wednesday and Thursday, but you could go any day, Monday through Thursday, spend an hour. Jerry will make sure there's boxes down and there's lots of garbage bags for donations to go out. I'll take care of any donations. So I'll be there working Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Okay. Is there um, anybody? Okay. Any other announcements or Jerry? I got one. Just a shout out to St. John's. The meal yesterday was great. Okay. And they were, they were pretty happy with how they did too. So thanks everyone for supporting them. Any birthdays or anniversaries? No? Okay, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Thank you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we're able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the of your name. Angels and archangels, In your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offer himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take me, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, when he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of 
are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And for those who do not have bread, we'll say together the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you've already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ, the of heaven. The body of Christ, the of heaven. The body of Christ, the of salvation. The blood of Christ, cup of salvation. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you've graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ, who calls us to take up our cross and gives us strength to bear our own and one another's burdens. Courage, armed with heavenly 
daily to increase till in the kingdom we see face to